solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. I want to talk about uh, one of the other uh, elements you addressed in the book, uh, Dharma Sankata. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, you talk about that in several situations and in a way you say that Arjuna archetype is uh, a lot about confronting these Dharma Sankata. That's and right. Really, uh, resolving them. Uh, you know, one of the other professors I've studied, a uh, gentleman called uh, Joseph Baderako, in Howard talks about this concept of right versus right. You know, he says in leadership, it's not right versus wrong. Very often you have to choose between right versus right. So, uh, what's your uh, approach? Uh, again, uh, again, we can have a full two-hour conversation just on this. But uh, for as advice for leaders resolving dharma sankatas as they go through their journeys, mm -hmm. what have you uh, learned from the Mahabharata? Uh, that can help leaders. Yeah. yeah, see, one of the things that has always troubled me, like I told you, na, is the current discourse, or, you know, till recently. Now, now there's a lot of people who are talking about contextual intelligence and all that. Last five, six years. Um, the, <clears throat> the idea of a leader being a powerful leader, a Bhima type leader, comes from a military understanding of leadership and all of that. Mm. And I'm sure you know this now that most books on management have actually come out of studying war and war theory. So, you know, words like progress, right? Uh, all the strategy, all the critical words in management are all drawn from war literature. As an aside, my father-in-law is a retired brigadier in the Indian Army. <laughs> <laughs> so I also have conversations about... Yeah. Uh, leadership in the army versus... Yeah, I have questions about leadership in the army and team building in the army. We'll, you touch we'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, uh, I think the colonizing, uh, last 200 years of colonization has also given a very different idea of leadership as fundamentally plunder and acquisition. Right? Now, the Indian idea of leadership has always been somebody who can deal with Dharma Sankata. Okay, Vikramaditya is the original model. Okay, and I'm sure all of us have read Vikramaditya and Vetala, no? Yes. Every story is a double bind, dilemma, Dharma Sankata story. Mm -hmm. And how he resolves it mm -hmm. is what shows his wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right? To solve a Dharma Sankata kind of situation requires wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not other capabilities. It also requires a deep understanding of the situation, of the various forces in the situation and how to balance them. Right? The word mandala, for example, which is the word in India that's used for any, you know, you know chola mandalam. Mm -hmm. The word mandala means there are diverse forces that have to be brought into coherence. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been in leadership, you know that it's always, always a question of, you know, balancing priorities, right? Quality versus cost, cost versus delivery, delivery versus, you know, product development or whatever, mm. right? You're always talking payoffs, mm. right? And there was one management uh, scientist, I forget his name, who brought in the word satisficing. It's a very interesting As a term, yeah. right? And that is what a dharma sankata, you can never have an optimum solution. You can only have a satisfying solution. And if you really have been in leadership situations, you know that neither part of this dilemma is going to go away. You solve it for now. In another context, it's going to reappear in a different way. So wisdom lies in how beautifully you understand this context and how you solve it, right? In a way that it is most coherent. 
Mm. That is leadership. Mm. Right? I, I, I have a big problem with many of the current ideas of leadership. Right? Every leader knows this here. Right? Long term versus short term. Right? Every, everything you answer has this kind of... A, and this, these are not binaries. Mm. Right? These are two sides of a polarity. And like a, like a, a ma- magnet, they'll always be there. You try to cut it, you'll have a north and a south again, no? Mm. So that's the difference between great leaders and successful leaders who don't leave a great company behind. And if you look at, uh, if we persist with this, Raghu, the leaders who are good at resolving Dharma Sankata mm-hmm. versus those that struggle with it. Is there, a, is, there a, is there something that's common with some of these leaders who, who have that uh, yeah. wisdom? Yeah. See, um, there are two, three things that I find with leaders who are capable of looking at Dharma Sankhita. Uh, there are also people who understand different types of power, mm-hmm. who are not linear, who are not one-dimensional, right? Who actually understand that different contexts require different parts, which is the five seats of power types. No? Very often I find that these are people whose reading is very wide, yeah, they, they are phenomenally well-read. So it becomes possible for them to model a situation, right? Not in the terms of the situation, but to use something else to change. And that helps to change the paradigm, mm. right? So they actually have a, a kaleidoscope kind of possibility of different associations, right? right? Many of them have an aesthetic sensibility, mm-hmm. right? The people who know music, or people who know art, or interested in it, right? Many of them are pattern thinkers. Mm-hmm. And that's not very common, right? They actually think, they can actually think systems. Mm-hmm. They can actually think systems, no, not systems thinking, whatever, not a forced thing. They actually see different parts mm-hmm. of the puzzle and they can play with it. 